Well, hello, and welcome to Online Worship with First Christian Church of Valparaiso. We all hope you will find great blessing and peace in this next hour as we worship God together in this fairly unconventional way. First, though, I'd like to mention a couple of things in the life of our church family. On Saturday, July 25th, we hosted an outdoor memorial service for our longtime member, Ron Gill. Then later that day, Boy Scout Troop 907 had their annual fundraiser pork chop dinner, though this time it was takeout, thanks to, what else, the pandemic. And speaking of the pandemic, our elders would like everyone to know that as a way of loving our neighbor, masks are required for any event held on church property. And with that, worship team member Carol Kuznicki is going to bring the light of Christ to our worship area. We invite you to do the same at home. Also, if you haven't already, please get a little something to drink and some bread or a cracker or something else you might eat when it comes time to share the Lord's Supper. Pause this a moment while you attend to that. And now, our Minister of Spiritual Care, Elder Kathy Light, is going to lead us in our call to worship. Brothers and sisters, today's call to worship is from a 20th century hymn, O God of Every Shining Constellation, based on a reading from Job. Come, let us join together in our worship of the one true God, O God of Every Shining Constellation. Grant, Grant us, us your, your spirit's, spirit's true illumination. illumination to read the secrets of your work. You, O oh God, have designed the atom's hidden forces with your laws and energy. Teach us as we use and care for such riches to serve your will. O oh God, you have impressed your image on all of creation. Even though we mar and distort that image, you love us still. Open our eyes to Christ, whose grace helps us discern the beauty of your work and will. Amen. Now, please join in singing, Morning Has Broken. At this time, before we speak with God in prayer, please join me for a moment of silence as we listen to God. God of wonder, God of mercy, 
we bow before you in stillness, pausing our busyness to be with you. Thank you for this day, for creation which fills and surrounds us, and for each other. Thank you for our senses through which we experience this world we are part of. Thank you for minds that search for understanding and for hearts that desire love and belonging. We pray for those experiencing suffering and loss that they might draw closer to you, the great healer. We pray for all your children of all ages, races, and places. Heal our fears and hatred. Open our hearts to love as you love. Guide us as we try to understand what to believe. Guard us from expressing unkind things. Help us stay grounded in your love and mercy. Lord, forgive us when we forget we are part of you, part of creation, and part of each other. Thank you for loving us and for sharing with us this amazing world of endless wonder. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, it's a great, great morning, your first day in heaven when you stroll down the golden avenue. There are mansions left and right, and you thrill at every sight, and the saints are always smiling, saying, how do you do? Oh, it's a great, great morning, your first day in heaven, when you realize your worrying days are through. You'll be glad you were not idle, took time to read the Bible, it's a great, great morning for you. His wings a time or two and look how he flies. Oh, it's a great, great morning, your first day in heaven when you stroll down the golden avenue. There are mansions left and right, and you thrill every sight, and the saints are always smiling, saying, How do you do? Oh, it's a great, great morning, your first day in heaven when you realize your worrying days are through. You'll be glad you were not idle. I think there's one thing we can all agree on these days. Pandemics bring change. Throughout all this upheaval and uncertainty, we're, we're all going through changes. God seems to be directing me to get back to some basics, especially Bible study and nature. Or creation. 
Creation is our foundation. It's who we are and where we come from. And we are all part of it. I've enjoyed being in nature my whole life, as far back as I can remember. But as an adult, I began noticing that I could quite palpably feel the presence of God in nature at certain times. And it filled me with amazing peace. But then about 10 years ago, I entered what I would later discover was what St. John of the Cross referred to as a dark night of the senses. I lost the gift of feeling God's presence, even in nature. Oh, I still appreciate a beautiful sunset, and I love being in the woods, but it no longer offers me a spiritual feeling of God's presence. It's not the same. I have a new normal. Sometimes things change. I have learned that when we no longer depend upon our experiences, our feelings, our understanding, the world expands. So let me repeat that. When we no longer depend upon our personal experiences, feelings, or understandings, the world expands. When I was deprived of my feelings and experiences of God's presence through nature, creation sort of exploded for me and with it, my image of God. Do you remember Disney's 1992 animated movie, Aladdin? Well, my kids were young, so we watched it a lot. In the movie, there is a scene where Aladdin is trying to understand who this genie is that came out of the lamp he was trying to clean up. Robin Williams' voice is the voice of genie in the movie. And in this dialogue between genie and Aladdin, genie just explodes. Phenomenal cosmic power. Itty bitty living space. And I think that's what we so easily do with our image of God. We want this all-powerful God that is omnipresent, all-knowing, that we can carry in our hip pocket. Do we desire an intimate personal relationship with our Savior God, present in the minutia of our daily lives? Or do we desire an all-powerful, incomprehensible God that is beyond our understanding? We've all come to God in one way or another. I know Albert Einstein came to know God through science. He couldn't understand this idea of a personal relationship. That just made God too small. But other people who come to God through personal relationship with Jesus Christ don't understand sometimes how anybody cannot want that and just want God in science. Well, I'm not so sure they're exclusive. I think they can become enmeshed. They can blend. Maybe they're not exclusive. Well, in preparing for this, I turned to Google, of course, 
to pick up a few facts about the Milky Way galaxy. And I learned. The Milky Way galaxy, ours, our home, is spinning at the incredible speed of 1.3 million miles per hour. There are over 1 billion galaxies like ours in the universe and billions more that are larger. I have absolutely no idea what those numbers mean. I, I can't wrap my brain around it. But I can be in awe of the magnitude. I don't need to understand it. And today I'm not here to debate the God particle or the Big Bang Theory. I'm not going to tell you the world was created in seven days or over billions of years, but I am going to tell you to look for God's signature in creation. Last week, Reverend Dave touched on this as he spoke about Sabbath time slow down sometimes and just observe. Go looking for signs of God, even in new ways beyond where you've ever noticed God before. It appears that this cosmic sea of spinning stars functions with remarkable order and efficiency. And I believe God truly did create this universe of endless wonder. I rediscovered Genesis, the very beginning of the first book in the Bible. And it begins telling us that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. God was present before creation. In the darkness, and the chaos of the void. Now I find comfort and reassurance in knowing that God is present even in the darkness and chaos that we might encounter. If we keep reading in Genesis, there's an amazing account of God's creativity and order. But if we get bogged down in the details of specific wording, we will lose a sense of the immensity and the wonder of our beginnings. We can't let black and white understanding of things keep us from embracing more of what Christ is. We are followers of Christ. Who is this that we are following? Let's not keep him trapped in historic Bible stories or stuck in the role of the Good Shepherd. The Cosmic Christ includes that and much more. Do you remember in the story of Job, Job was God's faithful servant who endured crisis after crisis as everything of importance was gradually taken away from him. Even in the midst of his suffering, we hear his confession of faith. In Job 33 verse 4, he said, The Spirit of God has made me. The breath of the Almighty gives me life. 
In his despair, Job needed to refocus to get back to the basics of his faith, to get through the ordeals that were being heaped upon him. Job and you and I are all part of this creation. The universe is our home. So when things look bleak, think about Job and look up. If we turn to the Psalms, in 103 verse 11, we're reminded God's steadfast love for you is as vast as the cosmos. And in 57 verse 10, God, your love is so extravagant, it reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness, so astonishing, it stretches to the sky. Now, I don't know about you, but I cannot even imagine a love that big. I think in human terms. I can't really understand what eternity means. But we don't have to understand. That's what faith is all about. Just embrace it. Jesus Christ extends God's expansive, everlasting love that we heard about in Psalms. Christ extends that to us. And then we, in turn, are charged by Christ to extend that same mercy to others, letting it overflow from us, even when it's hard to do. We don't have to understand it or judge whether it's worthy. It's what we are called to do. The Gospel of John reveals who Jesus Christ is in ways different from the Synoptic Gospels. John's Gospel begins in chapter 1 this way. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Richard Rohr is a contemporary Franciscan friar and priest, the director of the Center for Action and Contemplation in Albuquerque. I know many of you have heard of him. And he says, if we understand that Christ was present at creation and is, in fact, the Word, the breadth of who Jesus was and is becomes far more broad and complex. The cosmic Christ encompasses all of creation. This is important stuff for disciples of Christ, for followers of Christ. We need to know who we're following. Contemporary theologian and activist Matthew Fox says, the cosmic Christ is the light in all things, the holiness in everyday things. And science tells us there are light waves, photons, in every atom in the universe. Does that light language sound familiar? We just read about it in John chapter 1. So now let's fast forward to John chapter 8, verse 12. Jesus himself said, I am the light of the world. 
why am I sharing all this with you today? Well, this pandemic is one reason. We can't lose perspective of who we are and where we came from. Remember, cosmic Christ is in the grandeur of the cosmos, including the microscopic atomic particles that are the foundation of all life. If you think you understand who God is, then maybe your image of God is a bit too small. When you feel overwhelmed, remember to power down, step back, and refocus on the basics. Find your place of awe and gratitude, and there you will find God's peace and joy. Amen. St. Francis of Assisi was an amazing 13th century mystic. He is credited with the lyrics to our hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King. The words are based on Psalm 148. Please join us in singing. Usually in our worship services, now is the time that we would be collecting our offering, but things are different these days. However, let me encourage you to continuing offering prayer, prayers for each other, prayers for our church, for all churches, prayers for the nation, for our leaders, Prayers for the whole world. A pandemic involves the whole world. And if you would like to make a more traditional offering, it will be very much appreciated. You can mail a check to the church or go to the Donate tab at the bottom of our webpage. 
Would you pray with me? God, whatever donations are made, please bless the gift and the giver that both might work faithfully for the glory of your kingdom. Amen. Friends, as we prepare for communion, would you pray with me? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we find ourselves at your table, but in different places, different times, and in different conditions of heart and mind. Yet we know that in this symbolic meal, we are together in unity with you and with Christians around the world and throughout the centuries. May each of us be humble enough to set aside our differences at your table of grace. Bless this small bite we're about to eat that we may find our spiritual hunger relieved in knowing your earthly body was broken for each of us. Bless this sip we will soon drink that we may find our spiritual thirst relieved by knowing your earthly blood was shed for us. Forgive us when we forget your unifying act of sacrifice and shut you out, adding to our acts of betrayal. And may the very simplicity and commonness of these elements remind us that all of creation is your divine gift. Thank you for loving us, Lord. Amen. With that, let me remind us all of the night in which our Lord was betrayed, and how on that night he took bread, and having broken it, he blessed it, and he gave it to them and said, Take and eat. See this as my body, broken for you. Eat this and remember me. If you have a piece, please partake now. In similar fashion, when the meal was complete, he took the cup. Having blessed it, he extended it to the disciples and by extension down through the years, hands it to us. He said, take this and drink. See it as my blood and know that my blood was shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Let's drink together.
would you receive a benediction? Now may God, who created all that is, be ever present in our hearts and minds, reminding us that we are precious, we are loved, and we are held safely in God's hands, in this world and the next. Amen.